So we're about to eat and Andrew's here. She's in, oh, she's in town, we're so And then look, we got our food. And right, finally. <laughs> so we about to eat, so I gotta turn the camera on. All right. Okay, now I'm recording. Andrew's back there taking pictures. Look at that, look at that. A little bit on that, a little bit on camera. But yeah. So we're going down the pier. Peaceful. Well, it's kind of. Be here. Talking with here. Are you saying it? Say it out loud. What did you say? What did you say? Oh, yeah. This is the pier. She's trying to convince me. <laughs> That's great. But we're having so much fun. We are. And it's, I really love it. It's relaxing. It ain't been a day. <laughs> I may have this guy right here take our picture. Look. And you're out here sitting at the beach. We are at Oceanside Beach, I think. Something like that. Oceanside. <laughs> and as you can see, it's cloudy, but that's good because that means we're not over hot and burning and all that stuff. And we can actually just sit out here and enjoy it. So let's get some beach views. At this point, you probably should already know I'd be at the beach a lot. <laughs> You guys got a lot of beach views, right? So me and Angie, we're about to try this place. We are in Old Town right now. I think it's called Casa de, de Riz. Casa, Casa de Riz. Or right, Casa, Casa de Riz. And Andrew's behind me. She's back there. I'm short. Wait, how am I supposed to do that? Okay, wait. Okay, yeah. She's right there. So we're gonna try out this restaurant. I never been here before, but it was like highly recommended. So <sighs> let's not disappoint. But yeah, we're back in Old Town. So we're excited. So I may be able to show you something. And we have to put our name on the list and get a spot and all that extra shit. So. Then I ordered a mojito. So this is what Andrew ordered. I know it's This is what I got. We are about to meet. Let me go hungry. So, <laughs> no judging. But we have to do our taste test because this was recommended. And a lot of people said, like, oh, it's good, it's good. So we're about to see. That's right, guys. First taste test. Okay. It's good. Good. Okay. Hmm. Let's see how Angie likes her food. So they never give you enough? Enough tortillas. 
How many tortillas they gave you? Not only two. It's on the side? No. Uh, <laughs> try to cool it first. <laughs> You're doing fine. You're making a mess. You're doing fine. Uh, I guess this, is not, this. this is not. This is <laughs> not. This is messy food. food. <laughs> I hope Andrew likes the food. So I made my tortilla. See how it goes. Is that beef? What's that in there? Is that red beef? Um, this is a bacon wrapped oh. shrimp. Stuffed shrimp. Look at that. That looks delicious. But I'm trying the tortilla first. Well, this is a corn tortilla. Yeah, corn. Good? Okay. That's all we needed. <laughs> So this is my second time being here, and there's Andrew, her first. Okay, so we are gonna going for going. Oh, and those are the like the navy boats and stuff. But we are gonna take pictures by the statue. So we'll be back. yummy cheeseburger and I think it has bacon, cheese, tomatoes, onions, lettuce and all that good stuff on it. We gotta let her taste try it though. <laughs> and then I, you had the fries already, I have a chicken burger with like cheese and pickles and I'm about to put some mayonnaise on it and some french fries and then she also got a pink lemonade and I just got water because I need water.
Let me taste the fries. Let me taste the fries. Fries are good. <laughs> fries are delicious. Fries are delicious. Well, let's fix up our burger and then we'll come back and let you know how it tastes. So, what you think, Andrew? Good. Amazing. Mm -hmm. Mine was good too. Definitely come back. And it's my first time having the burgers here at this place. So, it's good. Want to record? You can record. Okay. And so I ask five dollars for the tour. You take five pictures. You take a picture of a seven foot giraffe because that's what the baby giraffes look like at the wildlife park. Six feet tall. And those fabrics over there, sir, hello? Those fabrics will cost you twenty dollars a yard. Except for the Congos, which are from Kenya. And uh, you can do Congos at ten dollars a piece. And so that I can measure it out a yard if you're interested in the fabric that you're making. But you have dresses. That rock has dresses, ladies. You don't have two dresses that are the same. But some women don't want to see other women walking around in <laughs> This rock over here has men's shirts and jerseys. Okay, from Kenya, so look up above. And that's the bird asking me if you want to go night night because she's been on duty. <laughs> Do you take cards or is it cash? I can take cards if you're doing more than $10. Yeah. Look into those two cases and you have exhibits. Ladies with your hair, African American ladies. Can I have the rest of you look at the ladies with the hair? That exhibit talks about 500 years without a comb. It talks about African American women in the United States. Wow. Only up until the last 50 years they started braiding and sister locks and all that other stuff and we started suing people for our civil rights. So look at those heads, but don't just look at the front of those masks, look at the back of the mask, because those braids go back 2,000 years. So what you're doing now is nothing new. So look at that book in the center, on the floor, in the center. What's the name of the book? 400 years without a comb. 400 years without a comb. African American women been here 400 years. And only the last 50 years have they been uh, braiding and everything. But if you, those are my high school students on the table with the elephants, baby orphan elephants. Look at them, please. Oh, yeah, I see you. They learn enough science to take care of the baby orphan elephants because I talked for 30 years with 60 live animals. Who's the tallest person in the room? Not me. I have snakes twice as long as you are tall. <laughs> Spiders as big as grapefruit. Wow. And here's a man that comes in bigger than I am. But if you look at my belt buckle, I sleep, we travel to the, uh, uh, to Ecuador with the, the, uh, the giant sea turtles and they lay their eggs and we deal with digging them up before animals can eat them and incubate them and put 99-98% back into the water. So the bird is a spiritual bird and I'll talk with her uh, in a minute but you see the the mass mm -hmm. all up they, yeah. come from dip. they have a, not only a price but the name of the country because my college students come through here these are 7,000 books in nine languages, and they can carry the who, what, when, where, why, how. Okay, who do we have here? We have people from where? Where are you from? Georgia. Georgia. Florida. My folks are from Atlanta. Yeah. yeah. They're part of that trail of tears. They walk from Georgia to Oklahoma, 60,000, Chickasaw, Choctaw Creek, Cherokee, and Seminole. And those 60,000 Native Americans had 16,000 African American slaves. So some of my African American, Native American relatives marched and died in that trail of tears. Oh, wow. Oh, yes, the first city in North America built by African Spaniards in Florida. Ponce de Leon, looking for the Fountain of Youth. Where else do you have? San Marcos, California. Oh, you did. <laughs> Here, in all of California. The state of California gets its name from an African Mexican governor. His name was Governor P.O. Pico. If you stand on the sidewalk, look to the left, you see the street light down there. You see a yeah. five foot banner that says 1846. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I passed it. I did see that it. That is Governor P.O. Pico. He's of mixed African, European, Native American descent. Wow. I'm not the life because I'm of mixed African, European, Native American. <laughs> and I'm a docent in the state park, and we d d don't say anything we can't cross reference. And I work with Dr. Henry Lewis Gates, if you know that name, mm -hmm. from Harvard, yeah. Harvard University. Every Tuesday, no matter what city, state you live in, 
you have a public broadcasting. If he's on your public broadcasting doing DNA on not only Africans, but on everybody in the United States. Mm -hmm. We yeah. have some serious brothers and sisters that don't look like us. They have five or six percent of African blood and things mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. I am 51 percent African, Fulani from Senegal, Gambia, 44 wow. percent European, Irish, and I'm only five percent Native American, Chickasaw from Atlanta. Uh, what else? Who else do we have here? Uh, we're from Arizona. Oh, you didn't Arizona. say yours. Oh, yeah, you're Georgia. I went through Ivory Coast for that year. Fantastic. Why? Why? Yeah. Uh, talk about Jesus. Oh, okay, good enough. Oh, there you go. Yeah, cool. Uh, I've done the Ivory Coast, but we've done 20 countries on the African continent. Oh. In South Africa, I teach at International University in, in Nairobi, Kenya. Those are my high school students in the Chacos, right on the Tanzania border. And we teach animal husbandry. But we teach African world history. Uh, so now, he said Arizona. What part of Arizona, man? Phoenix. Phoenix. You know anything about the Hurt Museum in Phoenix? Uh, it's the Native American Museum. I teach there. Oh. African Native American oh. history. Yeah. Part Native American. But I am a Buffalo soldier, folks. I'm a Buffalo. Fort Huachuca, Sierra Vista, Arizona. Mm -hmm. You have the first nine foot bronze statue of the Buffalo soldiers. His name is Emmett. And he's outside of the post. I'll show you a picture of me on horseback and uniform because we are equestrian riders and Buffalo soldiers. One out of every cowboy in the West was an African American. One out of every cowboy in the West was a Mexican vaquero, Tambien. So two out of five cowboys in the West did not look like John Wayne, Gary Cooper, uh, Clint Eastwood. Right. And Hollywood has not told you the whole truth. Okay? Yeah. Good enough. And uh, anybody else from anywhere else, we can talk about you. Because we deal with 40 countries in 40 years, spending a half million dollars of tax money. So, marketplace. You have an Africa room with a six foot Egyptian sarcophagus that looks like King Tut. If you pay your $5 for the tour, you can stand next to it, cross your arm, draw your fists up, and take a picture. Because if you ever go to that King Tut traveling exhibit, $55 million, 305 pieces. They will not let you take pictures. You can take pictures of mine. That's for the women. I always have the women stand next to the king because the king needs the queen. Mm -hmm. You men, I let you handle some bronze from Ife Benin, from Nigeria. And if you look into that case over there, the second shelf, people, you have some necklaces and they have bronze, copper, and brass pieces. And some of those necklaces are 18 to 20 inches long, big enough for you macho men. <laughs> but look into that glass wall over there. You have black and white ebony. You folks know anything about that tune, Ebony and Ivory? Who sang it? Uh, Smokey and... Uh, no, close. Uh, Stevie Wonder okay. and the Beatles. Paul McCartney. Call me. That was about race relations. As they said, Ebony and Ivory gets together on my piano. Why can't we? So look at those chest sets, and that is black and white ebony because ebony grows with black and white. How much is that? So look to the right of the chest sets. You have a statue, a little small statue. It looks like a person with a white hat on. That is a slice of an ebony tree, and the inside of the tree is black, and the outside of the tree is white. So ebony and ivy goes together. Why can't we? Right. Uh, anything else you want to talk about out here? Uh, the Africa room, 6,000 years, uh, Egyptian sarcophagus where the ladies can take a picture. The men, I have three foot bronze statues that you can hold because <laughs> Africans have been making bronze for 2,000 years. And so we talked about it. Your Uncle George Washington had 300 Africans. They built the wrought iron gates around Mount Vernon's plantation for Uncle George. And we call them enslaved. They're scientists, okay? good enough. You have a Latin America room where this gentleman left so much blood in southern Europe, all of Spain, all of Portugal, parts of France, Germany, and Italy from 711 into the spring of 1492. And that's why southern Europeans are quite often darker, curly hair, and brown eyes. And we do DNA on them with Dr. Henry Louis Gates. So with Columbus, Cortez, Rizardo, Balboa, Ponce de Leon, and right here in San Diego with Juan Cabrita. We had people of African descent on the Spanish ships not as servants, not as slaves, but as navigators, carpenters, soldiers, and so Okay? That's why we're here in Old Town, and we I'm working to expand 1,500 square feet. I own the property. I own a little house in the back. 
and I'm trying to put a 1500 square foot addition between the trip besides the museum. Mm -hmm. You have a That's Latin nice. America room from Mexico, Cuba, Brazil, Haiti. You have bullfighters that look like you <laughs> from Mexico. Uh, you go into the United States room. Oh, by the way, you have 15 saints and three popes. We got somebody been the after on a religious campaign. Well, you have 15 saints and three popes of African descent in the Catholic religion, and I can show you some of them. Inside, you have statues from Latin America, but you have black saints from East Germany. Mm. And I can take you to the Soviet Union, Russia, a hundred years ago and show you African people. The third most prolific writer in the history is in Russia. His name, and he is of mixed African descent. But I'm going to ask you, who's the most prolific writer in the history of the world? The most prolific writer is it Dr. Martin Luther King? Told you about oh, well, in the history of the world. Who is it? European? Oh, no, he's European. Come on. Lope de Vega? Plays what? Lope de Vega? From where? Out of Spanish. That's one. Cervantes from Spain is another. But who's from England that you know about? Very good. Oh, wow. <laughs> 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 France. And the man earned ten million dollars in his own lifetime two hundred years ago. His books and plays and pictures are translated into more copies than any other book except the Bible. You know about him because some of you have eaten a three month of tear chocolate bar. And that chocolate author is Alejandro Alejandro Dumas. The Count of Monte Cristo, the man in the iron mask, the three musketeers. I have pictures of him, and not only of him, but of his father. His father was one of 12 generals in the French military during Napoleon's time, during George Washington's time. General Thomas Dumas married a European lady, and his son is 50% African and 50% European. And if he was born in the United States, he would be called Negro colored, Black, African, African American and some other names you don't say in public, okay? So we talk about that. So these are pictures on the wall. You have books, you can take pictures of books, you can take pictures of artifacts, you can take pictures of written texts because my college students have come in and you can see the who, what, when, where, why, how. So all of the masks are priced and all of the masks have some name on it. And when you buy the item, we can give you a nomenclature on it. And some of you from Latin America might know something about this instrument. Sorry. It's a bellophone from West Africa, and this gentleman brought it to the United States a hundred years ago. Mm -hmm. And he made his out of metal, called a xylophone with pipes. But this one has gourds underneath to amplify the sound. Mexico would like to call it a marimba. In Ecuador, they would like to call it a marimba. But it is an African instrument. And if you can play the piano, you can play this uh, instrument. And this one's about $1,100 to $1,000. So there's a $350 one over there. It's only one octave and everything. So uh, this is what we do, what we offer. And so, and the bird, the bird is angry with me right now. <laughs> Did she just say sorry? Yeah. yeah. Because she said a bad word. I heard it. Oh, <laughs> what is she saying? Don't repeat it, please. She has one bad word. We are her second owner. Oh. <laughs> She's born in the United she said, States Hi. because she is the third most smuggled thing into the United States. Oh, she said going night night. People are second and exotic birds are third. Yeah. She's an African gray pair with red tail feathers. And her red tail feathers is part of the spiritual, religious oh, wow. activity from the Yoruba from West Africa who came into the Western Hemisphere. In Cuba. Have a spiritual bird. Well, let's talk about Brazil. He knew about it. He's a religious person, but he probably has heard about it because if you go to Haiti, you deal with Buddha. Buddha. You go to Cuba, you deal with Abu Kwa. You go to Brazil, you deal with Sun. Uh, Santa Teria. Uh, oh no, no. Deal with, uh, oh. Uh, well, you go to Puerto Rico, you deal with Santeria. Yeah. Yes, but you deal with in Brazil and all. And so I'm going to take her out. I'm going to have you get your cameras ready because I'm going to ask one of you that's a white newspaper article on that glass case. Would you read the heading of that newspaper article out loud? I like them a lot. <laughs> the heading. 
Alex, the world's most famous talking parrot, dies. He died a year ago at 31 years old. Mm -hmm. He had a hundred word vocabulary. He could identify numbers, colors, and geographic figures. Mm -hmm. They worked with him for two and a half hours a day at the university. And my little lady is 23 years old. We've had it for 22 years. 22 years. She has a computer chip in her chest because she is the third most mobile thing in the United States. Yeah. Drugs are first, people are second, and it's not first. It's coming out. 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 It's like, yeah, mm -hmm, whatever. <laughs> she normally will poop because when I take her out, I quite often put her on my shoulder to leave toys and I don't want her pooping on my shoulder. <laughs> so we ask her to go poop. So yes, this is your first picture that you can take. She is an African great hair, a spiritual bird from the Yoruba West African deities. Her red tail is part of that. And uh, she can live to be 65, 70 years old and develop well over 200 words of cabinets. Oh, wow. And she has one bad word. When she gets angry, she knows how to say it just like you and I. She can't spell, so I'm going to say S-H-I-T. <laughs> okay? And so if you hear it more times than not, she will say sorry. <laughs> I tell her sorry. Hi. Hey. Uh, somebody Hi. count to three. How loud will she can hear? One, one two, two, three. three. Dami una Oh, oh, that's so cute. Oh, I don't know if you understood my Spanish. I yeah. Just asked her for what? Okay. A kiss and another kiss one. One more. One more. One more. <laughs> Ken lived to be 35, 40, I mean, uh, 65, 70 years old and developed well over 200 verbal characters. She's going to outlive me. I'm 80 years old in August. And uh, I'm going to be very sad. If I'm gone and she doesn't have somebody to love, so oh. I have a gentleman working here to gain her trust and be able to handle her as much as I do. I used to have her to sit on your finger and take a picture, but the zoo has a half a dozen animals. Right. That have been affected by COVID, and we don't oh, know wow. enough about what we're doing. Yeah. So mm -hmm. this is as close as I'm going to allow you to get. So if you have a camera, this is one of your first pictures. And if you're taking a tour, uh, I'm going to invite you in to take pictures. You can take a picture of the seven-foot giraffe. That's about the size of the six-foot baby giraffes born at the zoo, and we had three of them in the last two years. One died uh, about three months ago, and another one has prosthetic mm -hmm. limbs. Mm -hmm. Now, can you think of a six-foot baby giraffe with prosthetic mm -hmm. limbs? Wow, yes, yeah. This is awesome. And so this is part of it. So uh, let me say... Thank you. I'm going to put you down. I'm going to put you down. He's so cute. He's so cute. Be careful. Watch your toes. Watch your toes. Maybe we should get a bird and train it how to talk. You should be finished eating by the time you folks leave. By the time you leave, going out, say goodbye to her and she will say goodbye to him. Okay? She is scary. She is so smart that you have to be really close. As, a, as an elementary school teacher for 30 years, I'm not in the habit of cursing, <laughs> and that's why she only has one <laughs> well, that's, <laughs> that's good. Okay, I don't know if we can invite you any better than that into the museum. Uh, and you can take five pictures. You have one with the bird. If you're interested, you can stand next to the giraffe and take a picture because it needs some love. Uh, can I have somebody go that way and look at the giraffe? It is anatomically correct with muscles and bones. Look to the right of it. It has a price tag on its tail on the right side. Tell me how much it costs. Nineteen hundred dollars. I have three of them. How many people need a seven foot giraffe in their house? <laughs> this is what that king of Spain looks like. The Moors. You see them. Yeah. See the horses. Yes. You saw them at Kentucky Derby, Pimlico Racetrack, Santa Anita, Del Mar. Those Arabian stallions, yeah. thoroughbreds. But now look at him, and look at the rifle in his hand. 
certain you in that side, can I have you look at that five foot horse and rider? He has a rifle in his hand. Tell me what the price is on the rifle. Twenty five hundred. I have two of them in case you need a pair. <laughs> Good so yes, so that is part of who we are and what we do. And so inside you have seven thousand books in nine languages, four different departments. Wow. And the Africa room has six thousand years of African history. You have two exhibits. Ancient <laughs> Egypt and the whole of the African continent. Mm -hmm. Latin America, you have 27 countries in Latin America speaking English, Dutch, French, Portuguese, Spanish. You have a bullfighter in Latin America that looks like him, the first African American bullfighter in Mexico. Mm -hmm. Go to the United States room and you have 31 coins with African Americans. Mm -hmm. Can I say that again? Yeah. How many United States coins have you ever seen with an African American on it? Mm -hmm. 31. One came out this year. Three months ago. Oh, Five wow. ladies came out three months ago. Five different ethnic groups in African American and Maya Angelou. Yeah, Maya And I sell recorders, but I sell the Statue of Liberty. The original Statue of Liberty was an African American woman. Can I say that again? Because mm -hmm. the United States has told you a lot. Yeah. Okay? She was offered to us a point. year after Abraham Lincoln was killed, 18. 66. The 13th Amendment passed, liberated four and a half million newly freed African Americans. And the French Anti-Slavery Society had outlawed slavery in France. When they heard that we had freed four and a half newly freed African Americans in the United States, they offered us a statue. And what did the statue originally look like? It was an African American. And I can show you not only one of the graphics, but I can show you the coin. If you're a United States Mint, made 2017 for $200. In five years, it has grown to be $350. But I can show you the first coin. Fridge, uh, 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 Dr. George Washington Carver and Booker T. Washington came out in the 1940s. Their coins are 72, 73 years old and will cost you $350. So I go from five dollars up until three hundred fifty dollars. Okay, good enough. So I don't know who's taking the tour, but come on in and I can uh, share with you. Me and Andrew are at Balboa Park. Mm -hmm. Balboa. And so this will be my second time being here. Oh. Andrew's first time. Yep. And we've been doing a lot of walking, but lots of walking, but we're having fun. I don't know. A wine event or something? Yeah. So, we're just sightseeing. Using of our dog the whole day. This <laughs> is my last day. Yeah, it's her last day, unfortunately. But I, as I was telling Andrew that you can get a lot done in the day. But anyways, we out here. We're just gonna randomly find stuff and bump into stuff, I guess. Here, over there, tents and stuff over there. Don't know what's going on, but we'll figure it out. <laughs> I took her to my spot and Balboa. The spot that I always come to, this water fountain. So we're here. Thank you. 
and we got a chair. Do you have napkins? Gracias. Thank you. I see, I was thinking ahead for you. I was thinking ahead because I knew when you start eating all that, you're going to need napkin. Taste test. Good. To do right now, we may have to do more research. Because, I mean, technically it's still early. Even if we do decide to go out, it's still too early to go out. So, that means we got to figure out some more activities before a certain... Not, I'm not hungry, but realistically, I know that it's almost dinner time. And I know we're going to have to eat dinner <laughs> eventually. So, we probably should add that to the list of finding a place to eat <laughs> for dinner because the last time we ate was at two something no three three something because we had those um we had burgers and then we also had a uh, ben and jerry ice cream so yeah we had that too i just had to get my churro don't worry i i, had, I got churros last time i was here too so so we good with that. <laughs> Trust me. That was the first thing I got when I came. I was like, oh, churros. Yeah, they're having some type of event. Oh, I got a, there is a fly. And flew in my eye anyway. But yeah, we did a lot of walking today. So there's a reason why we can eat. Hey, what are you saying? Oh, the 